And it is like having PhD level experts in every field available to you 24 seven for whatever you need, not only to ask anything, but also to do anything for you. So if you, you know, need a piece of software created, it can kind of do it from scratch all at once. Sam Altman just laid out the single most important metric for understanding the race to AGI. In this conversation with Nickel Cometh, he didn't just talk about GPT-5, he gave us the clearest boundary yet between AI's superhuman capabilities and the one domain humans still completely own. Let's start right there, because he provides a stunningly clear roadmap for AI's current limits and its future conquests. What is the difference between AGI and human intelligence today and tomorrow? So, so to, like with GPT-5, you have something that is incredibly smart in a lot of domains at tasks that take, you know, seconds to a few minutes. It's very superhuman at knowledge, at pattern recognition, at recall on these shorter term tasks. But in terms of figuring out what questions to ask or to work on something over a very long period of time, uh, we are definitely not close to human performance. And an, an, an interesting example that one of our researchers gave me recently is if you look at our performance in math, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we could solve math problems that would take like an expert human a few minutes to solve. Recently, we got gold level performance on the International Math Olympiad. Each of those problems takes about an hour and a half. So we've gone from a problem, a, a thinking horizon of a few minutes to an hour and a half. Uh, to prove a new, an important new mathematical theorem, maybe takes like a thousand hours. And you can predict when we can do a thousand hour problem, but certainly in the world today, we cannot at all. And so that, that's like another dimension where AI can't do it. Did you catch that? The thousand hour problem. This isn't just about math. It's a metaphor for deep, prolonged, original thought. Altman is telling us that AI is a grand master of the 90 minute tactical sprint, but it cannot run the marathon of true strategic invention. This is the clearest definition I've ever heard of AI's current frontier. He just handed us the stopwatch. He's showing us exactly where the line is between superhuman calculation and human genius. The ability to sustain a complex, novel line of inquiry over weeks, months, or years, that is the final human moat. This isn't about intelligence in the abstract. It's about intellectual endurance. The entire future of work, science, and creativity hinges on this one metric. And when a technology comes along that can solve almost any short-term problem instantly, what does that do to the very concept of value and capital? Sam's answer to that question signals a complete break from economic reality as we know it. I was asking someone at dinner the other night if they thought that uh, interest rates should be minus 2% or 25%. And he kind of laughed. He's like, well, that's a ridiculous question. It has to be. And then he stopped and said, actually, I'm not sure. So I, I think it's like, yeah, it should be deflationary eventually, but I could see it being weird in the short term. That's actually a very interesting thing to say. Do you suspect it would be minus 2%? Uh, eventually. Right. But I'm not sure. And maybe it's just like we're in this massive expansionary time where you're trying to like build the Dyson Sphere in the solar system and you're borrowing money at crazy rates to do that. And then there's more expansion beyond and more and more. And I, I, I don't know. Like... I find it very hard to see more than a few years in the future at this point. Minus 2% or 25%. This isn't just two numbers. It's the admission that our fundamental economic models are completely broken. He is describing a world where the laws of finance no longer apply. This is the signal. When the cost to produce intelligence and productivity drops to near zero, capital is either so abundant it's worthless, hence negative interest rates, or it's infinitely valuable because it's the only thing that can build the next layer of AI infrastructure. There is no middle ground. This is the economic singularity in a nutshell, and we are living at its event horizon. He's not just speculating. He's telling us that the people building this future have no idea what it will do to our economic system. They are flying blind. 
So if our economic models are fracturing and AI can execute almost any task, what is the single most important human skill left? Altman brings it back to the most fundamental principle of creation. The, the, before this, I used to be a startup investor, and people would ask me what the most important thing for startup founders to figure out was. And um, my predecessor, Paul Graham, had this answer that has always stuck with me for people and it, to give to founders. And it, it became the motto for Y Combinator, which is make something people want. And that sounds like such an easy instruction. I have watched so many people try so hard to learn how to figure that out. Uh, and fail. And then I've watched many people work really hard to learn how to do that and get great at it over a career. So Make something people want. In the age of AI, this isn't just startup advice anymore. It is the prime directive for all human work. When AI can build anything, the only value left is knowing what to build. The bottleneck is no longer execution, it's inspiration, it's empathy, it's the deeply human ability to understand the unstated desires of other people. This is a radical reordering of the skills hierarchy. Technical ability is becoming a commodity provided by AI. The new premium is on taste, on vision, on the intuition to identify a human need. Sam is telling us that the most durable skill you can learn is not a hard skill at all, but the very soft skill of human-centric problem-finding. This leads to an even more profound idea. If everyone is using AI to create, how do you stand out? The answer is to behave in a way the model can't predict. Now, if I behave in the same predictable manner tomorrow, will be less valuable than me being contrarian. Contrarian not to the world, but contrarian to my own behavior almost. So do you think the world inordinately favors contrarian behavior tomorrow? Yeah, that, that I, that's a good point. I think so. I think uh, I, the thing I'm thinking is how much will the models learn to do that? You, you know, you, you want to be contrarian and right. Most of the time you're contrarian, you're contrarian and wrong, and that's not that helpful. But but yeah, I bet the ability to come up with the kind of contrarian and right idea that the models today just can't do at all, and maybe they'll get better at it at some point. Um, that value of that should go up over time. L d getting good at doing things models can't do seems like an obvious increase in value. This is a game changer. The new alpha is unpredictability. As AI models get better at predicting patterns, the most valuable ideas will be the ones that break those patterns. Being contrarian and right becomes the ultimate human arbitrage opportunity. The world will not just favor, but inordinately reward genuine originality and the courage to defy predictive logic. This means that our value will come from our own internal inconsistencies, our ability to change our minds, and our capacity for a creative leap that isn't just the next logical step. The machine optimizes the path, the human discovers a new destination entirely. This is where true leverage will be found. But our value isn't just in what we create. In a world saturated with synthetic content, our most valuable asset might just be our own humanity. Look, the models are going to be much smarter than we are, but there's a lot of things that people care about that have nothing to do with intelligence. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe maybe there can be like an AI podcast host that is much better than you at asking interesting questions and, you know, kind of engaging whatever. And I personally don't think that podcast host, that AI podcast host is likely to be more popular than you. People really care about other humans. This is like very deep. People want to know a little bit about your life story, what got you here. They want to be able to like talk to other people about this like shared sense of who you are. And there's like some cultural and social value in that. We are obsessed with other people. Um, and why? Why is that, Sam? Why do you think that is? That you know, like I think that's also like deep in in our biology. Uh, He's saying something profound here. Authenticity is the new currency. In a world of infinite, perfect AI-generated content, the demand for genuine human connection and story will skyrocket. The value isn't in the perfection of the output, 
It's in the imperfection of the source. We are biologically wired to care about other people's journeys, their flaws, and their struggles. This is the ultimate defense against AI commoditization. An AI can be smarter, faster, and more efficient, but it can never be you. It doesn't have a story. The market for human experience, for shared identity, for knowing a real person is behind the work, that market is about to explode. Our humanity itself becomes the scarce and therefore valuable resource. So, with these massive societal shifts on the horizon, let's ground ourselves in the tool that's accelerating all of this. What exactly is GPT-5? Sam's description is less of an upgrade and more of a categorical leap. But the thing that has been most striking for me is in ways that are both big and small, going back from GPT-5 to our previous generation model, is just so painful. It's just like worse at everything. And I've taken for granted that there is a fluency and a depth of intelligence with GPT-5 that we haven't had in, in any previous model. Um, it's an integrated model, so you don't have to like pick in our model switcher and know if you should use GPT-40 or 03 or 04mini or any of the complicated things. It's just one thing that, that works. And it is like having PhD-level experts in every field available to you 24-7 for whatever you need, not only to ask anything, but also to do anything for you. So if you, you know, need a piece of software created, it can kind of do it from scratch all at once. The key phrases here are painful and PhD level experts in every field. He is not describing an incremental improvement. He's describing a phase shift. The experience of using the previous model has become painful. That means the gap in capability is so vast that the old way of working feels primitive almost instantly. And the concept of an integrated model is critical. We're moving away from a collection of specialized tools to a single, generalized intelligence. This is the real promise of AGI taking form, a universal problem solver that doesn't need to be told how to approach a problem, but can deduce the best path on its own, whether that's research, coding, or planning. This new level of capability demands a new way to interact with it. The old hardware just won't cut it, which is why Altman's vision extends to the devices we use every day. I, one, one of the things that I think will be defining about the difference of AI versus the sort of previous way we've been using computers and technology is you really want AI to be have as much context as possible, do stuff for you and be proactive. So a computer or a phone, you know, it's kind of either on or off. It's in your pocket or it's in your hand and you're using it. But you might want AI to just be, you know, like a companion with you throughout your day and alerting you in different ways when it can do something to help you or when it's, you know, there's something really important you need to know or reminding you of something that you said you needed to do earlier in the day. And the current form factors of computers are, I think, not quite right for that. They do have this either on or off binary uh, that I think isn't quite what we want for like a, the sort of sci-fi dream of the AI companion. This is the end game for human-computer interaction. He's talking about breaking the on or off binary of our current devices, the smartphone is a tool you actively decide to use. The AI companion he envisions is an ambient, proactive layer of intelligence that is always with you, always aware, always ready to assist. It's a shift from active tool to passive partner. This isn't just a new product category. It's a fundamental change in our relationship with technology. It means AI is moving out of the screen and into the fabric of our lives. This is the hardware revolution that will define the next decade, moving intelligence from something we summon to something that surrounds us. My bold prediction is this. The thousand-hour problem will be solved far sooner than even Sam Altman's timeline suggests. And when it is, these discussions about our economy, our skills, and our identity will no longer be theoretical. They will be our immediate reality. The real question is what uniquely human skill are you cultivating for that world? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more analysis on the future we're building right now.